Adam Heath, a.k.a. Captain Sack, a.k.a. my camera is slightly like cutting my head off. You have to see the fabulous hair. I don't work this hard on it for nothing. Uh, anyways, welcome to Die Bear Adventuring Company's Monday night's episode of The Escorts. We're on episode number four. Uh, our escorts are joining us. Um, Chief will not be on camera tonight and appears to be running a bit behind, as I haven't heard Chief unless I'm just I'm completely here. missing. Oh, you're just very quiet. <laughs> yeah. I have not heard you at all. So Chief is with us. But not on camera. Eric will be returning in just a moment. So, uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and give the rundown on some stuff that we need to. D and D Beyond. Thank you very much, D and D Beyond, for sponsoring us and allowing us to use all of your wonderful tools. If you are not using D and D Beyond, uh, you're missing out. Uh, it can contain all of your campaigns, all of your characters. You can keep track of long, short rest HP stuff in your inventory, all of your items and things like that. And it is what we are using exclusively for this campaign. If you'll notice, our overlay has all of our beautiful faces, but nothing else in there. There's no Roll20 stuff in there. Um, that's okay. We do use Roll20 still, but just not on this one. Uh, we are doing a lot of theater of mind. I wanted to go for an aspect of, of a game that relied more on <clears throat> the visual story, or not the visual, but the, the auditory storytelling. Uh, that way it's an inclusive game for those of you who may be visually impaired. And I wanted to have that available to people so they can hear it instead of going, I'm going to click on this guy right here. So with that being said, um, a huge thanks to D&D Beyond for allowing that to happen. Uh, in the real world, Dire Bear Adventuring Company is uh, at Lucky Dice Cafe on Thursdays and Fridays and Sundays. However, for the next two weeks, my Friday night adventure night is being moved to Saturday. Um, I wanted to accommodate some folks who love to play the game, but can't make it this coming Friday, but are available Saturday. So if you're looking for me on Friday at Lucky Dice Cafe, try Saturday for the next two weeks. Um, Thursday night is a standalone long, excuse me, a long form campaign. Um, there is a lot of subterfuge, mystery, uh, solving the problems that are going on and un unraveling this entire organization that has had itself wrapped tightly around this city in the far north of the uh, of the world and they are quickly realizing that people that they can trust and they're not sure who to trust and who not to trust and it's the kind of game that i like to write <laughs> makes you wonder who's on your side and who isn't um we also have friday night this coming friday we're playing or excuse me saturday we're playing deadlands a uh, Weird West adventure. It's um, it's a D6 based game, uh, along with a lot of others, Powered by the Apocalypse kind of thing, uh, where it is all D6 based off of skills and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. It's a Wild West game. So if you like the Western styles, uh, there's plenty of uh, mystery and adventure going on there. And that's what's coming up this Saturday. Sunday, we are playing Adventure League. My table is running uh, Princess of the Apocalypse, but unfortunately, I'm full. We have another table running Curse of Strahd, which is unfortunately full. We have a Dungeon of the Mad Mage table, which is close to being full. And then we have someone who's running the Season 8 games. Um, really, what I'm trying to say is if you're in the Huntsville area and you're a DM, on Sundays, we could really use you from 3 to 6 p.m. Just saying. If you'd like to, we'd really appreciate it. Um, also there, I'm going to be talking to the owners about expanding adventure league from instead of three to six, where you're trying to cram in going for a full four hours, uh, and doing a two to 6 PM. So that way we can make sure that all of the adventure gets run, especially since running the adventure league at Gen Con, where you had four hours, I have become skillful enough that I can cram everything in three and a half, but it gets really tight at times. And I don't want to cheat anybody out of uh, event, uh, advancement checkpoints. So uh, we are looking to go to a four-hour schedule on Sundays. But for now, it's three to six until I get the buy-in from everybody. Um, let's see. There's that. We have Tuesday night is the Holocaust to the Ekajadi, which is Esper Genesis, which is sci-fi. Please feel free to come by and watch. That is here from 6 to 9 p.m. Central Time. Right here on twitch.tv slash GM. Come support our DM, Jason, as uh, our partner with Nerd Eternal. Nerd Eternal Network. Uh, not to be confused with the other one that's coming up, Nerdsmith. Uh, on Wednesdays, we have a showcase. Um, uh, we are... We just wrapped Icons, or is we have, do we have one more episode of Icons? Two, two more episodes. 
at so least. So DM Jason, DM Jason is back on Wednesdays with two, at least two more episodes of the Icons game, which is superhero based. And a lot of the people that you see here, well, a couple of the people that you see here, uh, which on my screen, there's one to my left and one to my right. I have no idea. I'm not looking at the overlay, so I don't know where they guys are. Um, <laughs> there you go. Down into the right. Those, those, those people um, are, are uh, playing. What are you guys playing? Twins? Is that right? Yeah. Awesome. yeah. As they answer, like, right in unison. That was perfect. Not planned at all. Um, <laughs> Twins who found out that their mom has been brainwashed. And oh, that's always good to find out. My twin's not happy about it. I can only assume that she <coughs> is not thrilled, but probably not as angry as mine. So we have icons on Wednesdays, at least for two more episodes. If you're a DM and you'd like to try to run something, a one shot or anything else like that, this is the perfect place to do it. We are always looking for people to run games. We're always looking for people to run new games and new things to try out or even old games that you're comfortable with. We're happy to have everybody. So if you would like to showcase, that's what Wednesday night is for. It's Wednesday night showcase. And then on Thursday, we have Maddie back with Curse of Strahd, which is her passion, uh, <laughs> her favorite module, um, only because I didn't allow her to seduce Strahd, but she did make a deal with him. I didn't even try to seduce Strahd. It's true. You didn't even try. Although you did get angry that you weren't allowed to hit the wolves because, you know, oh you can't. Hit the werewolves if you don't have a magical so weapon. We got there. Um, huge thank you to uh, all of my DMs and all of my players who, without you guys, um, would be the point, really. So thank you guys for that. Um, so again, if you're looking to DM something, want to run something, try something out, uh, Wednesday night is there. The only vetting process that we have really is just don't be a dick to people. And that's a pretty easy one to get by. Um, so yeah, let me know. Join the Discord. Send me a message on Discord, and we will. Maddie and I will try to accommodate you and get you guys going. Um, speaking of Maddie, uh, let's see. For the month of August, right? Are you? Or did I we got, call I that? Got nobody. I okay. Got nobody. Um, keep an eye out on Roll Twenty if you're looking for a game to join. We will be opening them up again. I'm hoping uh, once we figure out what it looks like. But we do have pay-to-play options on Roll20 for people who are looking for adventures. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll work out the schedule and let you know more when the, as that comes. Uh, the next big convention that we're going to be at, as far as Diary Bear, is going to be Winter Fantasy. I will be there running games for Winter Fantasy, but that's not until February. I'm not running anything locally here. Um, you? I'll be there. You're going to be there, too? Oh! Did you actually? Yeah! Awesome. Yeah, Mom you can meet gone. two. Two of the Dire Bear DMs, as well as uh, a player that's in our crew. So find us at Winter Fantasy. It is all Adventure League, so if you don't have an Adventure League character, that's okay. It is, uh, you purchase tickets to play, but I will be there running games and as much fun. I had a blast doing it for Gen Con. I am looking forward to doing it again. Um, it's in Fort Wayne, Indiana, for those of you who don't know. Uh, I know that that's on the way past you, if I'm not mistaken, Steve. It's still a ways east of here. Oh, okay. Um, but we will be there if you are looking to run or play D&D and you want to do it in a huge epic setting, which we did the epic had, I think, 10 tables. And you all work to do these missions. And as you do a mission, you run the mission report up to the marshal in charge. And then they announce they'll give you a special mission on occasion. And then when you finish a special mission, that actually enhances the entire like gameplay for all of the tables. And then if you do enough missions, everybody succeeds. If you don't do enough missions, everybody fails. And it's a lot of fun because all the tables are working together. Um, so like we had people in the tier threes like getting up and leaving to go fill out another table because they were pulled aside for that special mission to do it. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, so if you've never seen it done, uh, I would suggest doing it winter fantasy in February, uh, of 2020. So I think I prattle on at the head enough. Um, I will say two things here. If I don't seem as upbeat as new normal, uh, the weather is kind of taking a toll on me. So I'm going to try to keep myself going together. Also, if I lose power and disappear, um, that's because it was storming really bad. So hopefully it's calmed down. I don't hear it like pounding the ceiling and the roof as hard as it was earlier. So 
we'll see what happens. Um, last week, though, let's cover that. Welcome to the escorts, everyone. Our vanguard has dwindled down another number at the loss of uh, Pelea, and Leope is beside himself at the loss of his sister. Um, however, through not really comfort, but an understanding that was achieved, he at least opened up and plotted along beside Tangaroa, at least in quiet. Um, there was a small verbal altercation between uh, Zastari and Manlin Crow uh, concerning his role, which he adamantly reminded her that his choice for the Vanguard was not his choice. Um, the you find yourselves oh um, you also did not kill all the bandits you actually captured one thanks to the monk applying the correct pressure and then proceeding to walk him from the area while he was re you were told to kill the man leaving no survivors you instead decided to place a dagger in his hand, free him, and allow him to go his own way. But he did tell you the story that his own tribe, his people, were being held captive by another group. Does anybody remember the name of the group? <laughs> go to your notes! That's, the sound yeah, of yeah, rolling dice is a nice touch there, too, I believe. Wasn't it the Aeoni? Something like the that? Aonai. The Aonai. Aonai. There we go. That's how... I'll write it how it sounds. Aonai. E-O-N-A-I. Aonai. Or it's A-E. A-E-O-N-A-I. Aonai. Yeah. Um, but that they were being held and that they were pursuing you all in search of one thing. The girl. Um, Avashanti, you've learned, is her name. And <clears throat> as you plot along, the rest of your trip through the forest was mostly clear. You reach the edge of the caldera, and you can see your target in sight, the place where you're arriving. Cormelin. It sits in the middle of this... Of this um, burned out caldera long ago dormant um no activity there the warmth though that lies underneath still allows it to become a place of of actually the green verdant beauty it's um it's very lush through here uh, small grass grows over rocks and you can see that it's like a, a blanket in places a carpet of grass you can see not many trees there doesn't seem to be a lot of, of you know, trees there, but lots of small bushes and, and grass and things like that. Um, the caldera descends in a nice, easy slope, probably about 80 feet down to the basin floor. And as you go, you can see that the houses are built in such a way that instead of leaning each other in the caldera, they're actually standing perfectly straight, even though the base of them may be partly on some of the the curvature of it. Um, as you move towards the town, men leading the way, guiding the horse of the crone as he goes, there is uh, a quiet in the air. Um, I would like for everyone to give me perception checks, please. Eight. Sixteen. Sixteen? Yes. Eleven. Eighteen. Awesome. 21. Great. V, what did you get? I'm sorry, I might have missed it. Sixteen. Okay, that was the first sixteen I heard. Okay. Um, V and if I'm not mistaken, Molly, you had a 16 as well. Oh, I had an eight. Oh, an eight. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, v, Chief, and Maddie. Um, as you're moving through, again, the warmth in this area makes it not uncomfortable, but it makes it actually very nice. It's actually probably roughly around maybe like a low 70s, given the ambient temperature of the air with the warmth underneath the caldera. Um, and as you march, you kind of see that the road is like a, like small pebbles that have been laid out and brushed perfectly. The buildings at the edge of town lay empty. And as you start to move towards the center of the town, the three of you notice that there's not a whole lot of activity at all. The buildings are made out of shale and stone. Uh, you can see that wood there, which is mostly like a gray, but treated against the weather. Um, there's just a, a feeling of being unlived in. In the center of town is the only one of the only few trees you see. It is large and it looks like it looks like a birch with its white it has like a white uh, bark and and flesh to it. But it's much too big around for a birch tree. I mean birch trees get pretty big, but never big around. And it stands tall. The leaves are unlike anything you guys have ever seen. And it seems to have light strung in it. You don't know what's making it light up, but it seems to have small globes on strings that run through it and stay lit. It gives it a very beautiful, almost um, like a holiday, like some sort of festival that had went on and you guys caught it in the, in the interruption or the midst of it. Everybody had to go to the bathroom at once. Now there's just a giant line. Uh. <laughs> That's why it's we can't find anybody. It's like that one video on Twitter where all the guys start coming out of the bathroom. <laughs> just like 12 people out of one stall. It's just <laughs> flooding out. Yeah. <laughs> bathroom stall, flooding. Yikes. Yeah. Never good things to have happen at the same time. Mm. Is there any way I can get onto one of these rooftops? Oh, absolutely you can. So, That's what I'm going to do. Is it really polite to climb a person's house? Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I can't fight with that logic, okay? All right. <laughs> I'm really um, glad that Mello is backing me up here. The the uh, It will be in athletics because you are climbing. Sure. So if you'll give me an athletics check, please. That's a four. <laughs> well, you don't fall, but as you place your foot on there, you try to like skitter up the side, but the smooth stone is a little bit outside your dexterous and uh, muscling up climbing. How you find you yourself like, like you find yourself where you got to go like parkour, but your foot hits the stone and just kind of slips and you land back on your feet and look around um, quickly. Can I wait? How, can I like give her a boost? Roof? Yeah. So I was gonna say, like, how tall is the roof? Because then she's just gonna turn to one of the big three Hulkin guys that they've got and ask for a boost. <laughs> you muscles. They all three look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a uh, fifteen feet okay. to the eave where it, you can. Get I feel on like there. I could throw you up there. Mm, let's not throw me. Just like get a running start um, and then what? No, let's not. Throw the rogue. Okay. I need I'll, an I'll, I'll, give, I'll give her a boost. I need an athletics check from you then. Me? Yes, you. The wit. You what are doing the yeeting. <laughs> Should I stand um, around just in case she falls? 21. All right. You step up and don't catch the stiletto to heel. Catch the tip of the boot and just with all your might, hook her up in the air. I need an acrobatics check from you now. 14. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's not graceful, but luckily you're over the eave, so nobody can you. Um, all they hear is the kind of scrabbling uh, as you kind of like hit with one knee and then roll. Uh, but you kind of like, you. it doesn't cause you any damage, but it, like it smarts your knee. You're like flexing your knee out a little bit. It's like, ow. Um, yeah, but you're... 
on the roof. Mm -hmm. It's a one story building and you can see that there are multiple story buildings all around you, twos and threes. Um, (coughs) You can see Manlin and the crone are, he's still heading towards the center of the town. Um, You guys are about, mm, I'd say about three quarters of the way through. So you got like another block or two before you actually get to the center of town. She's following, but she's going to stay on the roof because it's too quiet in a place Mm -hmm. that was supposed to be expecting a convoy of people. All right. Uh, yeah, you you approach the rooftop. You can see that the next one's going to cost you. You're going to have to jump across. Um, I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, you you are going to have to jump across, which is, again is going to be uh, with a run. It's still an athletics check because you're jumping. Okay. Um, but go ahead and give me that. It just lowers the DC because you're. What jumping. is happening? Hang on. She's on the roof. Oh, okay. I was, I was trying to figure out, like, where we at. Um, would it be possible for me to take the stilettos off? What did you roll? I rolled a two. It's a total. Total two? No, no. Two plus three for five. Okay. Um, what is your, what is your strength score? Uh, a plus one. Okay, hang on a second. Most of this stuff is, it was intended that she would be parkouring all over this stuff with Zach Baddix. It, well, you're right. Tumbling is acrobatics, but the act of jumping uses the muscles in your leg. Mm-hmm. So tumbling, you're right. But that part of it? Yeah. Got to be fit, baby. Got to be toned. She is. I just, she is. I only had so many <laughs> stats to go in places that they needed to go in. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. But I have Hold on just one second here. I have yep. a plan for her stat level ups, so. Uh, because I'm looking for something, so bear with me just one moment, okay? Mm-hmm. Eric, your uh, your lady friend is up on the roof. Okay. In I'm, corner, I mean, I'm wondering if we because should we can alleys in case she falls. Uh, mm-hmm. we came into town and there's just like this distinct lack of anything not being lived in. Ah, uh, okay. But everything's all pristine and nice, and was this our uh, ninety percent sh- sure we're about to get ambushed? So, what's your strength score again? Uh, the score is a twelve. Modifiers a plus a twelve. Okay, so the way that long jump works for all of those out here. So let's educate everyone. When you make a long jump, you can cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least ten feet on foot. So that means that you can cover twelve feet from rooftop to rooftop. As long as you ran 10 feet before you made the jump. When you're doing a standing long jump, you can only leap half of that distance. Um, so. She'd have ran, but. Of course she would have. Now, the question comes to me, which is how wide is it between these two? And I already have that answer for you. It's 10 feet. Okay. So you cleared it. Now I want you to give me an acrobatics check. Well, that is a 16 on the die plus 6 for 22. Uh, You leap and you tuck your shoulder and roll and come up to a stand. uh, And they are moving through the wider part, which luckily you're moving parallel with them, which is the narrower roads from the wider ones. You can see that they are now approaching the, uh, the center of town. You have one more rooftop to jump to before you get to where they're. Okay. So Athletics. again, it is. Uh, nope, because again, it's a standing number. So as long as there's enough movement and distance, okay, well, you can she make takes it. The run. She takes the run. So boom, there you go. Okay. That's another sixteen on the day. For the acrobatics check when I land on the next mm-hmm. room. Okay, so uh, yeah, you rum, you roll to it, and you're fine. Um, so the only time you would really use athletics, so let's go into that for a moment, um, is like if you're trying to clear an obstacle, like no taller than maybe say like a quarter of the jump distance, such as like a hedge or a low wall or maybe a table or something like that. Otherwise, you're fine as long as you have that movement there. 
So when it comes to athletics to making jumps, it's really like whenever you're trying to do something in particular that may be outside of what your normal range is. It's like, hey, Cap, can I really put all my oomph? Can I throw all my ass into this jump? And then I would say, all right, give me a death. Give me an athletics check. Um, all right. So you roll to the next roof. And are you just going to stand up? Or are you going to scrabble over the top and look down? I'm going to scrabble up. Like, are these peaked roofs or are they? Yeah, they're they're not really. They don't have a high pitch on them, but they're peaked enough that you can okay. lay belly down on one and look over the roof of the next. She's, or the, uh, look over the. She's going to kneel. Mm-hmm. Kind of just straddling the the peak of the roof. It has uh, the rounded pot style um, chimneys, okay. so it's not like a, a single brick. It's like two smaller ceramic pipes, okay. or or in this case, uh, clay pipes that come out of the roof. Well, then she's then in that case, she hooks her leg around one and then just kind of yeah, they're like they're like on the one roof. here and one here. So yeah, yeah. Um, when you put your leg around it, it's Warm, not hot. Warm. Is there a faint scent of smoke? Mm, give me a perception check with your nose. With my nose? Who would have guessed? Uh, that's an eight. Maybe. Huh. Maybe. <laughs> the rest of you are on foot, making your way towards the center of town, unless anybody would like to do something differently. Uh, owl going to center of town. Uh, again, much like what, um, God, I almost called you Rezavati. <laughs> much like what Zastari sees, it is, um, uh, there's, there doesn't seem to be any signs of life. There seem to be any activity. Right. Um, can I have the owl make a perception check anyway, see if we can find anything that might be moving around? Sure. Okay. Uh, well, that's a natural 20. So 23. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I can't roll any higher than that with advantage. So. Um, no, there are no movements. However, there are figures in the buildings, but they are all standing Stock and locked still. Hmm. He's going to go up to the honor bound. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, um, so I just smile on the head to scout out a little bit. There appears to be a lot of people in those buildings. He looks down at you. And just kind of goes and nods his head up and down three or four times. Like, you know. You know about it? I was prepared for this. And I've studied the passages. I know my role. And this was written as well. Mm. They'll not harm you. Well, they're standing very, very still. Like statues, almost. Yeah. Almost. Come on. And at this point, you see him throw his leg over and slide off of the mount. He keeps the girl and the crone in position, but he guides their horses as he moves on foot. You can see him, uh, as a star, you see him dismount the horse and he starts to guide them into the center of town, right up close to the tree. Who, is anybody else doing anything? Following along? Plotting his demise? And I'm, use I'm heading, it. I'm heading towards town. But not quite there. Um, I'd be following. Okay. So you guys were keeping your distance, but like in the town, but just a little distance away from the rest of the group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you see Jolly and Beckett looking really out of place in this quiet town. Um, I think Zestari said she wanted to do something. 
she did. Give right. me just one second, okay. though. Mm-hmm. Leo Pay is um, lagging just behind your left hand side, um, and you can see you like out of your peripheral Tangaroa, you can kind of see him fidgeting with something. You realize what he's doing is restringing his bow. Okay. Um, and he's pulling. He has a couple of arrows in his hand with the bow, so he can quickly draw and fire them. Um, but he's looking around. It looks like his hackles are up. He looks nervous. But so I can I ask him? Are you are you nervous? What's it about? So, something about this place is, doesn't sit right with me. I can't put my finger on it. Uh, I sort of understand how you feel, but uh, okay, okay. maybe. All right. Stay close. Yeah, I will. And he kind of like drops his step back one pace, but kind of moves into where he's behind you or just a little off center behind you. What did you want to do up on the rooftops to start? I'm going to cast message since that's actually a spell that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to send the message to um, Ezra. And it's very short. Something's not right. Don't let them near the tree. So, uh. hang on just one second. Describing how this looks, you look back over your shoulder, you can see Ezra moving down the road. And for that moment, Ezra, your mind tells you to look up in that direction. You know how you get that feeling like you're being watched and all of a sudden you turn to look directly at the person who's looking at you? That's what happens. You see a few quick hand motions that convey exactly what's been trying to be said. Hey, something's not right. Don't let them near the tree. And even though there's a distance between you two, you kind of understand it. Uh, Okay. Ezra's jogging up towards where the horses are. Mm-hmm. So he, didn't, he has no idea what what's the tree going to do, but I guess if he gets closer to the tree before they do, then that'll be fine? Sawtail's like walking like right with the honor bound the horses. How far away is the tree? <laughs> uh, from where Manlin is, maybe 25 feet. They were, like I said, they were at the edge of the of the houses or the buildings before when Zastari got into place. How far am I from the tree? <laughs> um, you tell me. How how far back were you lagging behind the uh, group? You tell me. Um, maybe like 15, 20 feet. Sure. You were 20 feet back then. Okay. Um, can I cast Divine Sense? Uh, reaching out through your, um, bear back. Yeah. Reaching back through your, your, uh, your heritage, your lineage, uh, and also the, the ocean. And you kind of reach out with your mind, just trying to get a feel for what's wrong with this, looking for signs all around that might give you a clue as to what you're looking for. Uh, but you don't see any of the typical clues that you would see for like undead or, you know, anything that was supernatural or, or what have you. Nothing evil. There's no evil. Doesn't seem to be any evil. Just seems to be kind of eerily quiet. I use this thing and nothing happens. I'm waiting for the day I find evil. Because <laughs> <laughs> then I will smite it. I am going to be blinded uh... by it. Um, what is Nightman's name again? Uh, Manlin. Manlin? Manlin. Um, Doll's gonna jog up mm-hmm. to him, and he won't touch him or anything. He'll just kind of lean into view a little, a little, and say, "What are we doing here?" This is the end of our journey. This is where a decision must be made. Whether we keep with the old or not. I'm back. Back. Um, Sightail mentioned people. Why aren't they out here? Because it's not their time yet. 
Right. And they will fulfill their role depending on how things go. Now, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to I, be done with this business. <laughs> Fine. And he'll and, just let him go. All right. And he leads the horses almost to the tree when he stops. And at first he reaches, reaches up and helps Avashanti off of her horse. And she stands her small hand like clutching onto the side of his. He's wearing a hauberk. And you can see that it's padded with chain mail, but it's a padding and uh, she's got a hold of the hem of it. Um, he re then reaches up and, and grabs the crone and helps her down. Um, and she seems to be uh, earlier. She looked like she was kind of wasting away. Um, she seems to be rejuvenated at the, for the moment. Not like she's fresh as a daisy, but she doesn't seem to be as, as, Haggard. As, She's uh, less old today. Yeah, <laughs> as venerable as she was. That's the word I was looking for. Mm. Venerable. Um, he holds his hand out one to each of them, and they take his hand, and he guides them the rest of the way of the tree. Once they reach the edge of the tree, he lets go of their hands, and they move together themselves, locking hands. The crone looks down before cupping the girl's hand and strokes her hair. And then they step forward. Uh, as she turns, um, passive perceptions from everybody. Actually, I should say, who has the highest passive perception? 16. 13. Not me. Okay. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, not me either. If you want me to do a passive investigation, I could probably outdo all of them. But... <laughs> no, this is more of a noticing thing. Uh, what about you, Tangaroa? <laughs> uh, Should be under your saving throws. The best face. <laughs> so what am I doing? I might have zoned out. <laughs> your passive perception skill, please. 11. 11. Okay, great. So 16 is the highest one then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... You're up on the roof, though, aren't you? No. Oh, no, Ezra is. Ezra is the one who had the 16, sorry. Yes. Ezra. Um, you were kind of back from everyone a little bit. He had jogged forward because he was going to oh, stop them. Oh, that's right. You were going to stop them. You, As you turn to face them uh, and you turn back, as you start to turn, something out of the corner of your eye, movement from one of the buildings. Um, a rather stately looking building uh, again made out of of stone that seems to have been mortared onto another facade so it's a very pretty house um you see a tall figure not not tall like beckett tall but tall and slender um he starts to move a bald head um, with a long face and he's almost gliding it seems like his movement of his feet are such that it almost gives him this image of him gliding over the stone. As he approaches, he smiles, and it's warm enough. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be an empty, malevolent thing. He seems to be more taking stock of all of you and giving you a greeting and then smile. Um... As he approaches, you can see that his fingers are thin and long, and he has them steepled together as he moves, keeping them in front of him. And he guides all the way over to where Manlin is standing. None of the rest of the vanguard seem to say anything. They seem to kind of hold themselves. Um, Mello, you feel kind of a nudge at your shoulder, hmm. and you look to see Hawk, who today uh, has taken on the female form again. She gives you a wink and she says, I wonder what's this all about now? Yes. You use something in your eye. Are you right? So you brought me the other scimitar. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to stick around to see if I can find the one that you took from me. Oh, you gave that to me fair and square. 
true, but you did give me something to. And she winks at you. <laughs> nice bit of a toss. And then she starts to move forward. <laughs> um, the strange figure that moved out of the building comes to a stop right before Manlin, or right next to Manlin. They're both looking at the crone and, and the young girl. He doesn't really speak to Manlin, but you can get the idea that some sort of message was transferred between them. One of those knowing looks. Manlin kind of nods his head, and he turns back and he looks at you all. Has everyone gathered in close with the exception of Zestari? I mean, Satya was right yes. next. To him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, the tall, thin figure with the bald head turns and looks and waves his, like, does his fingers like this. And as he does, you feel emerging from the buildings more people, more people that come out of the buildings. Um, all different, all different sizes, but all with that thin build, um, they all have kind of an androgynous look, but they're all shaved bald and they all have kind of thin fingers that they've steepled together and they kind of move. Some of them don't move as gracefully as he did. Um, and you can see that they're young and old alike. They all approach and kind of take a semicircle. You can see about 30 of them. I'm going to have to just mumble under my breath. I knew there was going to be another party if I kept following. Just um, the the one that presented himself uh, first turns and opens his arms up and addresses all of you. Um, his voice is like liquid. And as he speaks, he says, Thank you all for making the journey here. It was most perilous and yet at the same time. You all took that peril in stride. Even those, and he gestures up to the top of the roof, who would hide in plain sight played a role in making sure that our tradition stands. He turns and he looks at Manlin. I would ask you in this journey you grew to new, both the young and the old. Have you made a decision yet? Manlin, you can hear the leather in his glove creak as it opens and closes on the pommel of his sword. He looks around at all of you, and then he shakes his head no. He says, I'm sorry. But I can't find it in myself to do what you ask. The burden must fall to another. The bald-headed man who has not named himself nods once and then smiles again and turns and looks at the rest of you. In your journey, you've seen the young and the old both in their own lights. A decision must be made. We can continue the tradition or we can grant you a boon. But the cost is going to be a life. I need one of you who is brave and understanding to step forward. And he opens his hands up, gesturing to all of you. Um, what tradition are you talking about? A tradition, arcanist, that is not written in any of your books. Yes. Well, now's a good time to explain. This world knows no but 
It hides at the cusp. Certain things like your ability to understand your companion, Arcanist. The tradition that allows you, Protector, to reach out with your mind to see things that would harm others. Your ability to mold fire at your will. All of you have seen a taste of magic, but yet never really understood its full potential and what is not here anymore. Upon a great time ago, magic was abundant here in Edremon, but it was abused, taken for granted, and my kind locked it away. Now we have a tradition. We see if magic is going to be held by those who see worthy or do they seek power? Do they wish to have this on the world as a boon or only for their own greed? The girl or the crone? Um, I might ask a slightly not entirely relevant question, but who are your kind? We have so many names. Some the of Blue them. Group. I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I really was. <sighs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> I'm not even sorry. <laughs> we have held magic at bay for so long that the only name we remember is Elithid. Is that a name I recognize? Give me a history check, historian. <laughs> Where did I put my, my 20? There it is. Uh, I can math today, I swear. Uh, 24. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. It's it's mentioned as almost a nightmare. Um so but what it does mention is a unified mind and the ability to almost reshape reality. So something like this what he's describing. Yeah, yeah. You're pretty sure it's not outside their power. You, you're, um, don't eat my brain. No, nope. <laughs> doesn't mention anything about that. <laughs> I know. It just warps reality. I'm being a turd. Uh, I'm being a turd. <laughs> so you're the, you're the people that are capable of warping reality? We few that remain have the ability to alter and change things as need be. I see. So our choice is what? Kill the girl, maintain tradition. The crow. I'm not sure what you're asking. The girl is full of power. She is a catalyst that can rekindle all of magic. The crone has waned and has no more magic of her own. It 
If you kill the crone, you maintain the tradition, and the girl will be held by us, as many have her ability stripped, and then she will return, and like the crone, become a wise woman of her. So, would you restore magic or maintain this as it is? Does the child know that this is her purpose? He looks at there. He turns his head and looks back at the girl. And then he looks back at you and says, You may ask her. Um... I'll go over to her and, like, kneel in front of her, get down on her level, and, um, I'll just say, do you know why you're here, and so on? She looks up, and you can see her eyes are this very light blue color, and she's, they have almost gray and she has this, you know, blonde hair that's almost cottony white. And she looks at you and she shrugs and then she nods her head slowly. <laughs> and you're okay with all of this? She just looks down at her feet and then looks at the old woman and then looks back at you and she's just like. She nods her, shakes her head back and forth. Just like, not like adamantly, vigorously, just kind of a, you know, kind of a no, a slow back and forth. She <coughs> should have a say. It's her life. And I'm not okay with this. So then you would kill the crone? I would kill neither. But it's not my decision to make. You are not stepping forward? No. I am not. You see Jolly and Beckett both looking very confused. And when the eyes of the overseer pass over them, they both just kind of shake their heads vigorously back and forth and just back up a bit. Um, almost as if they're terrified of the of the thing. They both back up and kind of bump into somebody behind them, uh, turn and look to see one of the others that are in the semicircle around them. And uh, you hear audibly as either Jolly or Beckett, you're not sure which one swallows hard. It like fills the area with that <laughs> sound. Um, the overseer looks to the, to the group and says, one, one of you must make a decision. Does that Not decision killing is still a decision. Sense? Sorry, Eric, what did you say? Sorry. It, he's your... just like, he's very quiet. He's like, but does that decision have deaths? I I get the tradition. I understand the traditions all by. Comes a point when sometimes blood is too great a price to pay. Tanga. Tanga Roa. <laughs> Um, he's going to look over at the old woman and I get a little closer to her and say, what do you think of all this? Is this, is this really something that you want? Is this? <laughs> the crone looks at you and smiles. She pats your cheek and she says, my girl, 
excuse me, <laughs> my boy. The decision, it's not mine. I'm old as it is. If I go, so be it. But the world stays the way it is. It's a hard thing to sacrifice someone. The decision is not mine. I'm okay either way. I lived a full but empty life. Bore no children, had no suitors. That was my deed. Ezra? Oh. Um, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just moving yeah. from one to the next. <laughs> well, I'll say, uh, Sayatil did want to ask the elephant question. Okay, we'll come back around to that in a minute. Tenga, I apologize. Did you have something to say in, in rebuttal to that? Um, he was... <laughs> What's going to happen? Try that again, because your, your I lost microphone... the first bit of it. Yeah. Uh, he'll say, like, did you know that this was going to happen? As right? did the girl. As did the knight. Damn it! Ezra! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's shaking his head. No, he's this isn't a decision for a stranger to make. This should be made by either of them, not us. The fates collide in many ways, but this is not our fate. This is theirs. Mellow. I mean... Their deaths aside, do you think this place is mature enough to handle magic anyway? Well, we know you're not. Well, I mean, rest I already that. have my magic. I'm good either way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Have you seen my wand? No. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> broke myself. <laughs> um, Dull. Anything else? Um, <laughs> no, not really. I'm kind of just looking at this little kid. Like I, I don't want to kill her. <laughs> she reminds me of my siblings. <laughs> Seto, you said you had one more question you'd like to ask of the elephant. Yeah, he'll he'll look up the elf and say, "If the world doesn't return to the way it was, do these sacrifices still have to keep happening?" That is a question that is yet to be answered. And as he says that, is the story? Uh, I'm assuming I've heard every single word that has been said from my perch up on the roof. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand up, pull out my bow, and mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot the girl. Roll the attack. Yikes! <laughs> oh! Uh, that is a 6 plus 6 for 12. Oh yeah, that hits her. Jeez, it's a tiny little person. <laughs> Um, what is your base damage with that bow? Base damage with the bow uh -huh. is 1d6 plus 4. Okay, so 5. Okay, yeah. perfect. Don't even worry about rolling. As the illithid answers the question, it's silent, but you all hear it at the same time. It's that th and you look as the girl stands down and clutches her chest. You can see the arrow sticking out of it, the fletchings on it her white uh, robe that she was wearing starts to uh, paint itself in crimson as she looks up. Manlin rushes over and like cradles her and eases her to the ground. Um, she's already dead in his arms. 
As he lays her to the ground, he closes her eyes and looks up at you, Zastari, and what is your expectation to see in his face? Honestly, considering how much she doesn't like him, she really doesn't care. He looks up at you with relief. The crone looks down at the girl and she kind of closes her eyes and then sits down at the base of the tree. The crimson from the girl starts to spread onto the roots and you can watch and she's such a small thing. But every one of the globes start to glow with like this pink color that starts to turn a bit darker. The crone looks up at Manlin, who you can see, uh, those of you who are close enough, there is wetness on his face where he is crying. Um, he looks at the crone and says, well, this is the end of it then, mother. She nods and she says, Our path is finally ended. The act wasn't selfish. It wasn't... It didn't seem to come from anything other than a decision that was made. I am ready to return. Um, he draws his sword and sticks it into the ground right in front of the tree and then holds his hand out for her. And none of you noticed it at first, but there's this white light. It starts off as a small bead and it's been growing steadily larger and larger. Now you can notice it. And as he takes her hand, he looks back at you, uh, Satayel, and says, good luck with whatever the future holds, Sage. And they start to walk towards this light. All of you feel the wave before you see anything else happen. It pushes you back and there's this slow hum and then a boom. You're all blasted off to your bottom. You were, you're fine. You're on the roof, but you're like blasted on your back. Every single one of you knocked prone. You're not sure how long you were out. May have only been a minute or two. But you blink and you open your eyes. And you don't feel any different, really. Ezra, your mask is on. Doll, your mask is on. And Garoa, your mask is on. Satayel, as you open your eyes, there's a persistent voice in your head that asks if you can hear it. Are you there? Yes. Mello, you are, you're always kind of warm. You've always kind of ran warm. And now you're like on fire, baby. Um, the story, your ears hurt a little bit. Satayel, the voice just kind of sighs and says, ah, finally, and then goes quiet. Looking over at Beckett, who stands up first. He was tall to begin with, but now he seems impossibly large. Easily seven and a half feet tall. And where his soft skin was, you can see that he has slate gray skin. He flexes his hands and he looks confused. But at the same time, completely normal. It's like looking at a shirt that you haven't seen in a long time and going, did it always say that? Or better yet, 
when you're driven through a town that you drive through all your life, but you look at one of the buildings that you swear to God, that sign wasn't there last. It doesn't seem to fit, but at the same time, it's been there the whole time. This is how all of you feel. You're not weirded out. You're not like, oh, this is different. This is exactly how it is, but at the same time, is it? Is it really the same? You don't recall. Jolly looks normal. He's a human. Big barrel-chested dude. Tangaroa you turn and look and sitting next to you is a small figure. Feral brown hair covers his whole entire body. The tail twitches and he's looking at his bow and the claws that are on his fingers and he looks at you and his mouth now with a feline nose and shape small snout sticking out. He looks at you and opens his mouth and Leope's voice comes out and he goes, you're a fish. You're a cat. You're a fish. You're a cat. I've always been a cat. Have you always been a fish? Oh. You've always been a fish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You've always been a fish. Well, no, you're not a fish. <laughs> You're not a fish. What are you? Uh, the Triton. Right. Yeah. You've always been a Triton. Always been a Triton. Uh. Are you sure? It feels uh, different. I hope but so. <laughs> I don't remember you being different. I remember you being a Triton, but I also remember you not. I'm confused. Uh, equally so. Ezra. Your mask doesn't move. Wait, what mask? You've never worn a mask before in your life. Your kind don't need masks. You're terrifying. What are you talking about? But there's that conflicting memory. You have a conflicting memory. It is the Mandela effect. There you go. That's the way to describe it. It's the Mandela effect. You're pretty sure it's always been this way, but you're not sure at the same time. You know. Satayal, you know that voice has always been there, but at the same time, it's new. The owl flits down on your shoulder and where you had an understanding of one another through training, now there seems to be an otherworldly connection. Yeah. It's the story. Let's say real quick, mm -hmm. Sawtail's gonna gonna like Sort of like worried as the pull up, he'll like up a rock that's nearby. And usually he'll like put some like phosph like fluorescent like sort of thing on it to use light. A light cantrip. It lights up. It's gonna. It doesn't take the ritualistic time that it does. It it was like just a second and boom, it lights up. Burns with no heat. Provides light. <coughs> I just lit up a rock. I... Do, what do I... No, I always do that. I'm confused. I need a nap. I need a nap. <laughs> Doll. Yeah. Mandela effect again. You're pretty sure you've had that tail your entire life. <laughs> but yet at the same time, it feels new. You had no problem operating it. I'm just holding it like, what the hell? 
It's it's like I said, it's like the Mandela effect. It's been there the whole time, but yet has it really been there the whole time? Was there really a Shazam movie? <laughs> you sure it's always been Berenstain? Is this allowed? <laughs> we should have um two antelope looking horns, pointed mm-hmm. ears. Maybe uh like Tuss, but at the in the top set of his, of his like feet. more like canines, yeah, like elongated canines, like fangs. Mm-hmm. Almost. Tangaro, what do you look like? <laughs> you don't look like a fish, looks like a guppy. <laughs> He's just sitting there on the side of the street going, oh. <laughs> or like one of those goldfish with the bobbleheads. The big, eye. the big eyes on the side of yeah. the head. <laughs> oh no. Um, probably like dark skin and he's still got the, the hair. Mm-hmm. Like but it's it's a even darker, like kind of blue green. Yep. He's got gills on his neck. Webbed hands, fingers, his fingers are hands. webbed. <laughs> He's got like spines, like little mm-hmm. fish spines on his back. He's still wearing the same outfit, pretty much. But mm-hmm. having like an existential dread. <laughs> King fish. All right. Is this story? Mm-hmm. I'm glum, motherfuckers. <laughs> what you looking like? Uh, well, I, I actually probably have the, I mean, next to the Safiel, least, I have yeah. the least amount of change. Mm-hmm. The only thing different about me is I now have pointed ears. Mm-hmm. Hence the reason your ears hurt for a minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, visibly, absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, no, that's kind of the only difference, is that I have pointed ears. But the question is, do I remember everything that happened considering the fact that I was the one who made the decision? You remember killing a girl? You don't remember why you felt it was necessary. You felt it was a clear decision to make? And you made it without hesitation, unlike some of the others. Then the next question is, do they remember that I did that? You would have to ask them. I don't think I'm going to, because I think that sounds like a bad idea. Um, However, I am going to slide off the roof and gracefully uh, tumble to the ground and Ah. back up to my feet. Acrobatics. I want to roll some damage. Please fail. Uh, that is a 12 on the dice plus 6 for 18. I want to roll some damage. Please fail. Come on. I can ask. <laughs> um, okay. You land gracefully on point And... Uh, Stand to your feet. You can see Jolly, Beckett, Leope. You see the rest of the crew. Uh, you don't see a hawk. Should I have? I mean, you remember being, you remember traveling with hawk. Interesting. Well. Is everybody alright? It's not like the rest of you to just pass out in the streets like that. So do I remember the kid? Mm-hmm. Do I remember the arrow? <laughs> oh, yeah. You all remember. 
an arrow being shot into the child coming from only one source that you can think of. <laughs> one source that was on the roof that Takaro quickly lifted up to help the, to the roof. Hmm. Well, immediately aggravated and he's like right to make a life or death decision like that so you're going to tell me that you would have killed the crone and subjected the girl to a life of boredom I'm saying I would not have made that decision at all so we'd have stayed there for months on end until somebody made a decision we're nope. in good company. I don't know. He's really frustrated. As much, Bad, he's frustrated. As much as I hate to say it, if she didn't, I would have. And look, now you don't have to have that on your conscience. I saved the young girl from a life of boredom. of boredom. That's not the point. That's why I did it. That's not why I would. Power to you. That's why I did it. Nothing worse than being bored. Especially not being bored for your entire life. And besides, I don't know about you, but, uh, I've got this nice new look. Which also means that I can probably do this, and then she's just going to, with her hands in front of her mouth, she's going to just go out, and she's going to cast message, and the only person who can hear her is going to be Satyal. This requires nothing. And you made a rock glow. It's a new world. Is and it? you get to catalog it. Something tells me this isn't a new world at all. This is the one we always live. Just never. Hmm, a wondrous place I never knew. <laughs> right before we all get sued by Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. No. No. <laughs> I can't I can't afford to be owned by that mouse. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean he already owned so much of my soul. That's about well to say like we are in all like, owned like, already. <laughs> you can disagree with my decision all you like. It doesn't matter that it's been made. You hear a uh, a voice that you've heard before, a good farm-fed voice. Hey, uh, not to be one of them fellas who uh, tries to run, but any of you notice where the other folks went? Oh yes, the bald ones. You mean the elephants. Mm-hmm. Well, they are a race that are known to be able to <clears throat> warp, shift, and or break reality at a whim. <coughs> according to their desires. So why didn't they just warp reality back? Or, you know, is this how it's been? I'm confused. Is this the way it's always been and I just didn't know it? It is... <sighs> my belief given what data I have at the current time that the way we are now is the way the world has always been it's just that everybody's can, everybody's ability to perceive that world was altered there is a voice in your head Satel. it is not the calm celestial guiding voice it almost sounded like a rush lyric uh, it is a it is a deeper voice. It says to your head, "That is exactly correct." Uh, 
he'll respond mentally, thank you. I'll make you note of that. No. Thank you, old friend, for us. Why? For making a decision. Finally. Well, if she didn't, I was about to. I am curious. What would your decision have been? I would have killed the girl as well. For what reason? You say that this is a tradition that has been existing for so long that you barely I thought would be to walk the path of the Shura take a single life to end sacrifices. Your friend's act has not only dropped the veil that hit us all, but there are now forces in motion that I fear are tied to all of you. But maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure time itself will tell the true tale. Arcanist, write down the history. It's what I've always done. It's what I plan to still do. And take one of the fruits with you. And for some reason, your mind, you see the image of those little globes that are in the tree that you thought were added there as a strung along. It's just like an image that flashes in your mind. What do I need to do? When the time comes, you'll know. Is there one within... Each. Mm -hmm. Easily enough. Uh, yeah, he's he's nice. Just at a baseball. Uh, part of everyone to go inside check was like, nah, he would. <laughs> so he'd he'd be like, over. K. <laughs> yeah, he'll just walk over. Well, um, he's curious. This is something new to him. Sure. As far as he knows. So he'll walk over, he'll pluck a fruit. It looks and feels like in your hand a plum. It's more red than that purpley plum color. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the perfect name for the plum color of a plum is plum. Um, yeah. It looks more red, and you can see that all of those are still on the tree. Uh. What's your passive investigation? Sixteen. Give me an investigation check as you look at the tree. Okay. Uh, two plus six. Okay, well, 16 <laughs> is your passive. So. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the tree, um, you can, before it seemed to have this sort of almost supernatural essence or aura about it, Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be very old you notice that there aren't as many leaves on it and you see that the fruits that are on it are hanging low as they're ready to drop from the vine or drop from the tree itself I'll just put it one of his okay. pouches on his side in his own don't, little pocket. Don't easily forget it. <clears throat> I pray that our paths never cross again. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, Arcanist. It was well, 
<laughs> the city itself is empty. There are no presences here at all. The f Tenga Roa. Are you wearing boots? Um, no, I never not was. No, never was. Right? No, I never was. Doll. I was always barefoot. Doll, yeah. you're not wearing boots either, are you? No. Ezra? No. No. <laughs> How come our muscle bound guys are all wearing <laughs> barefoot? I love it. I mean, I wouldn't work. say doll is muscle bound. Yeah. We're just a uh, gang. It's fine. Just... It's fine. I'm sorry. Buff and barefoot. The, buff buff and barefoot. <laughs> the the foot fetish gang. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Putting boots on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he'd Make be able to wear. I think he's got like clawed nails. Yeah, well, uh, since the three of you are not shodden, the warm, the ground feels really warm right now. Fucking pissed. <laughs> God. The ground feels warm? Warm. Is it getting warmer or is it just... Uh-huh. It's getting warmer. So... And there is from somewhere deep below... Uh, like a rumble in the ground. I think it would you be a good go. idea to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's. Yeah, let's go. Let's boogie. There are two horses. <laughs> are you sure you don't want to, like, you know, hang out, spend some more time here? Like, shop hey, you know what? Why don't you go ahead and have a good time? We're going to go. Yeah, you can stay. He's not immune, just resistant. He can still die to it. <laughs> Doesn't mean he can't soak for a little bit. <laughs> he has what? Nine HP? I'll say this is what 11, I think it is. But he's also no. very dumb. <laughs> That's just like very a... true. What happened to the bard? He melted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we tried to talk him out of it. <laughs> yeah. That's you know. a volcano. Um... <laughs> I thought it was a Tarask. <laughs> I hope it's not a Tarask. <laughs> Let's not give the DM I don't idea. Like that <laughs> is that a fucking Tarask? No, it's no. not a Tarask. The caldera is what? <laughs> Maddie, you had a look on your face. Well, I mean, if this is getting hot and there is rumbling beneath the earth, it's time to go. The volcano, she awakens. I mean, Sa oh, feels already gone. Here. I don't know why we're... <laughs> That's right, he's going to mellow no, and no. carry him away. He's doing that. I assumed that somebody grabbed a horse or two and oh, rode yeah. away. Zestari just yep. hops right up onto one of them and rides hellbent for the edge of town. All right. Out. You watch as the ground starts to fall away from the center, replacing it is a bubbling cauldron of lava. Liquid hot magma. Uh, as you, <laughs> as you uh, watch the buildings crumble underneath and the caldera from the center starts to sink into the, into the lava, um, you can see where certain parts of the rock are starting to be upheaved and tossed and you all get to the edge of the caldera and climb to the top as you hear a kind of a and you see that it starts to bubble and boil up and start to spew pieces into the air. You quickly make your way into the forest and there is more bubbling in the pack ground. You can see it starting to rise higher in the air. Um, running just flat out, your lungs burning, except for those of you on the horse. The horse is slathering. Um, those of you on foot, your lungs are burning. You're doing your best to keep moving away from this explosion. And you hear, as you hit the canopy of the trees, you can still see it. It's burning bright enough in, in the background. There is a final kind of a, a moment where it's still, and then all of a sudden there's an eruption behind you and you can hear the sound of trees being knocked down as, as rock and other debris start hitting the 
canopy of the trees. Um, as you're running along, I need everybody to give me dexterity saving throws, please. It's so dark in my room. I don't even know where I put my dice. <laughs> 22. Hmm. Start walking around, trip on the... Uh, Actual 20. <laughs> nice. 22. 22. Is that our first one? 20? 20. Uh, 10. Oh. So two what 22s, you... a natural 20, a 23. What'd you get total with your 22? What did the total have been? Me? No, with your natural 20, what's the total? Oh, oh me? Uh-huh. Uh, 21. Okay. Uh, I've got Mellow covered. Hang on just one second. I got a, I got a 19 plus 3, so. I had a 17 plus 5. Uh, 17 plus 6. Hey, 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 B. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, B, for my next act. 18. <laughs> An 18 for Mellow. Yay, Steve, you're not going to die to lava. How does that make you feel? Hey. So the lowest was a 10? Is that yeah. right? But everybody else got a higher number than that? All right. Cool. It's going to be a, it's a group roll anyway. So uh, you guys, as you watch, you start to see the small bits come through the forest. And as a group, you're kind of like dodging and weaving out of the way. One of them is starting to hit right towards Dahl, and at the last second, uh, Tangaroa grabs him and like shoves him forward, and right where he was standing, a large rock that's still burning with it smacks into the ground, creating a nice-sized crater right there, sending dirt and, and uh, debris into the air. It settles down in a slow like cloud of dust. Um, you're still running right out. I need everybody to save me now with the exception of um who grabbed the other horse I except I actually one of the pcs probably yeah let's say huh, there's where hawk went uh so i need a constitution saving throw from everybody but from maddie who's on a horse oh okay so hawk got the other horse mm -hmm. okay that makes sense. 18 for me con save yep Unfortunately, I can't group roll a con save. <laughs> uh, that's cocked. Uh, uh, six. Okay. Nine. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Nine? Who got a nine? Nine. And a six. Nine. It's okay. Yeah, there 69, which is a good roll. <laughs> Steve, Steve got a, a 10. Uh, well, Steve didn't get a 10, but Mello got a 10. Um... You push yourselves to the edge as far as you can before you finally watch as some of your party members just, they have to stop. Their lungs are just burning in their chest. Uh, but the caldera and the dangerous eruption is far behind you. Um, the rocks seem to be missing most of you now. What's What does make it this far are the smaller pieces that don't really cause any damage. But what about the ash cloud? It's still there. It's in the sky. It hasn't settled down yet. Where's the pyroclastic flow? <laughs> That's what I was meaning to ask. Thank you. <laughs> Not the ash cloud. The pyroclastic flow. I don't want to get killed by some hot gas and volcanic matter. Do it. <laughs> You've all seen one too many disaster movies. <laughs> I watch a lot of documentaries. <laughs> there is not a volcano within like a radius of me, and I'm ready for one. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ready. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Reading the Twitch while I wait for uh, <laughs> wait for Maddie to get back. You're right. If it was a Tarasque, it would already be too late. <laughs> That's why you're, I was really afraid it was a Tarask. You're right. <laughs> I've heard you're about right, one Tim. too many Tarasks being zero, trapped in the ground. Zero Omega Primes is flying would be helpful. That's true, but they're all first level. <laughs> so nobody has the fly spell. Ash clouds me. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I don't know what a Tarrasque is. A fucking scary ass Titan boss. No fly zones. <laughs> the there's a, there's this a guy flag has up. Your flight. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, your flight has been delayed by at least an hour. Uh, a big shout out to Bubba Jellyfant uh, 104 who created some awesome sound files that I went into this thing. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, also Zero Mega Prime, who was one of the other DMs who uh, to Gen Con with me and super nice guy. So uh, thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, I th I saw Jason on earlier, oh. our DM. Um, How our big other, is he? One of our other DMs. That's a big boy. Oh. But um, yeah, he's a big fucking I boy. I think he may have went to uh, went to bed because he has to work the overnight. So, um, all right, the twenty five armor. Uh huh. <laughs> I was like, this, this. He would be really cute if he was small. He's not. He's got he's not. He's a titan. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, you're looking oh. at the Tarrasque. Got you. Got oh. you. He's pretty cute even as a big boy. I mean, he could step, give him a pet. And kill me, step on me and kill me. That's, he, that'd be fine. he does have the ability to swallow you whole. Look saying. at that health for me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, it's been a great night playing with you. <laughs> 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 oh, I didn't know that Tangaro was in there. <laughs> oh, never mind, they're back. That's what. That's what. <laughs> Kathy, you right there? DM.exe has stopped working. Please reboot the application. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. Um, side note. Somebody requested me to run a birthday party, and uh, they said, whatever we do, we won't fight a turtle. <laughs> I said, okay. I had full health. Like, I didn't take the average. I went, like, health. full health for the Tarrasque. There were nine of them. They were all level oh. 20. They all had at least one magical item because level 20 starting equipment. The the uh, fighter champion went archery and was just nailing him with shot after shot after shot. I think she had like three or four crits in there. And it's like they whittled his health down so fast. It was like, whatever. Nobody used a direct line, direct line spell on him. So it was uh, it was area of effect, which he doesn't have the reflect back. He does have the resistance, but yeah, they just beat the ever living piss out of him. <laughs> Jeez. We said it was a bit anticlimactic, so I said, "Well, if you ever want me to do it again, I would be happy to do so, and I would make sure to modify the uh... encounter accordingly." Next yeah, time you're sure. fighting three of them. <laughs> no, next time you're gonna. Next time I will make sure that there is something to throw before that. That will eat up and make you burn through spells, and then make you fight that thing. I <laughs> uh, see. You just have to hurl. You just have to hurl Cthulhu and power armor at him. Alternatively, this give is it gross. No, just three. And I like the idea of three of them. Let them flank. If, if there's like four people in the square, just let them flank all four. Of them. <laughs> no, just, just, hey, it, it, is they happen to get in the middle of a pissing contest of three Tarasks fighting over territory? Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> a Tarask and two T Rexes. want you to come up with a one shot ever. <laughs> Where's my pen and paper? Oh, don't forget they have legendary actions too, so fix that. Yeah. They also have legendary resistances. Mm hmm. All right. All right. Sorry. Do you Enough about to, trash. Do you need me to make a save? Uh, did you make a con save with everybody else? Have to. I'm on a horse. That's right. You're on the horse. No, no, you're good. Okay. Um, you all have to take a break. You have to catch your breath. Even me. Am I the only one that succeeded the con save? No, Dol got an 18, didn't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I think it was I mean, just me and Tangaroa. And Mellow. And Mellow. I mean, you can leave them behind. Maddie's, or Zastari's on a horse, and you two are, are able to push on a little bit further. Nah, I won't. 
I'll how far away is, in the back? How, how far away is the pyroclastic <laughs> flow from the eruption? Um, close enough that it's going to be a danger to you. A way that if you took a moment to take your breath, you could still run from it. Why? Because magic and because I'm not going to kill first level characters with a fucking volcano explosion. <laughs> I will uh, let you die by swords, bows, and arrows, but the volcano, you're all wrapped in plot armor. Can I just, like, <laughs> grab Ezra and Tangaroa's hands and just, like, try to pull them along? Like, you can't stop now. Come on. Um, as you are catching your breath, uh, the horse is restless and move- marching back and forth. And you can start to see why. Uh, the sound of trees being felled and the sound of ash and burning, the constant sound of popping of wood that's on fire. And you can see the heat wave is starting to make its way to you. You quickly push Time on. To go. You quickly push on, running again once more. Leope is beside you, Tanga, and he is quickly like bolting forward then like bouncing on the balls of his feet and waiting for you to arrive and then bolting forward again then waiting and then bolting forward and then waiting um he rushes forward and about that time he stops and you can see him like bounce back and his hands come up and his claws are out his bow is still on his back so he doesn't have it drawn a large hulking figure standing tall like a man but you can see that the arms are super long. The legs themselves are squatter than a human. As he stops, the thing looks down at him and you can see a gorilla-like face. As he leans forward and he kind of like grabs Leope by the shoulder... And hefts him up, and Leope is like scratching furiously, but it's not doing anything to him. He reaches around and puts him on his back. And you hear kind of a gruff, hold on. And then he's just bolts forward. He's just gone from your sight as he leaps into one of the trees. As you're all running, you watch as you hear the thud next to you. At first, you think it's more rock or something like that. But you watch as the Aonai appear. They're keeping pace with you. Eventually, they hold out a hand to you, Ezra, to you, Satael, and to you, Tangaroa, and to you, Dahl. And they're like, get on, we can move faster. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, like, no hesitation. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. As yeah. you, There's nothing that brings people together like imminent death. <laughs> as you... As you clutch onto their back, they smell like wet fur. But you're thankful for this because they are moving at a pace that you could not. And you find them quickly outpacing even the horses below. Um, one of them, Maddie, one of them swings overhead from Zastari and he yells down, Leave the horse flesh! We'll move faster! Where's Hawk? Um, are you asking him? No, or are you I'm just asking, asking you. me? Me? Where is Hawk? Uh, you see Hawk is on the horse next to you and she is like standing up in the in the stirrups and leaning over this head and she is whipping this horse with her reins side to side just as fast as she can, making him try to go faster. Uh, her first. Sorry, them. Hawk first. I remember. I remember. That's all right. He swing. He grabs a branch and swings almost in front of you. And as he does, you reach. He grabs Hawk by the back of her or their outfit and just huah, doesn't even give him a choice. And it's probably good because about that time, the horse's front hooves come down and you watch as it's just blown out and it twists and moves. It tries to stand back up. He swings Hawk up on one shoulder and then like grabs the next branch and swings down and like you see his hand as you're kind of like out of your periphery coming down for you. Uh, she's going to stand up on the saddle. 
Mm-hmm. And with just one last yeah, like really just tries to spur this horse forward as fast as mm-hmm. as fast as it can go without the weight of a, an elf on their back. And uh, she's gonna grab a hold of this very hairy arm. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, it's all knotted muscle and cording as you grab his arm. It like scoops you almost like a child. Tosses you on its back, and you can see that it's broad enough that Hawk and you are both like holding on. And he is just with all of his might swinging and throwing himself through the air, jumping onto branches and throwing himself forward. He is moving at, like I said, a really quick rate. You glance back to see the horse just pounding in the distance, but you're out of sight of it before too long. Um, you all lose track of how long you're moving through the air, but it's so fast. Um, before long, you find yourselves within the area of the forest where the trees are starting to thin out a little bit. And then you watch as you come, you can see just ahead of you the open plain that marks the entrance to the forest. And as you get to the edge of the forest, they set you down. You know that it took you days to get through this forest on foot. And granted, you weren't traveling at a breakneck speed for the all hell running from all hell breaking loose. But still, the rate at which they moved through this part of the forest was just amazing. The A&I that are carrying you set you down at the edge of the forest, and the one that's kind of the leader, he's kind of the larger guy, walks forward. He takes a knee, and he looks at all of you, and he says... It hasn't always been this way, has it? But yet, it has at the same time. Am I wrong? You're not. The world was the world was always the way we see it. It's just our perceptions had been warped. Mm. We couldn't see it. Do we recognize him? No, unfortunately. Okay. He looks at you and says, You are far from the road. You will have to find your own way back. We must save our people. You will have no more trouble from the Aeonite. Could you release the people you captured too? Give them a chance to survive. (laughs) We will make sure they are protected. The servant deserve that. Godspeed. Do your then you do your totems proud. You just kind of, and he'll just do a quick bow to the picture. He just nods his head at you. Uh, He kind of motions to the rest of them to follow him. And then he takes to the trees again and starts to move. And on that note, we're going to take a short break. We are going to take about um, 10 minutes. Well, we'll be back just a little after 8. We're going to take about 10 minutes, okay? I need to refresh my water and uh, find some ibuprofen. (laughs) So we'll be back in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, make sure to stay tuned to see where this all ends and what happens in the last hour uh, of the Escorts episode four. Although your escorting job is done, so I wonder what we're going to say now. We'll see. All right, we'll be back soon. Thanks, guys.
aquí. Tell me, don't tell me why. I know, no, no, you won't save my life. Save my life. Baby, keep on you, keep on your man.
All right, welcome back. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> night, or maybe a cloud of ash, has descended upon the forest and the surrounding area. You're all exhausted. You're all pushed to the edge. And you're in a new world, or the same world, but now it has different things. You all realize that you yourselves are different, but at the same time, you're all the same. You remember the world both ways. Oh, I've always been hot. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, quit trying to kill people. Oh, don't die! <coughs> I'm choked on a cucumber. I don't. I didn't really want to say that out loud after I said it. Phrasing. <laughs> hey, uh, Cap. Mm hmm. Question. Mm hmm. Um, which direction were we trapped along? You're traveling down the road. And then, whenever the and I helped you, you veered. No, no, no. I, I mean, to get to. We were north. heading to. North. Going. And you are now going south. South. Okay, so the direction the I and I were taking us, where was the direction they were taking us? They were taking you generally south, uh, east by southeast, so more easterly than south, but. Um, so. Satya will just stretch a little bit and say, well, I want to find the road again at least. Travel. I can always do that in the morning. A lot of the way. We're... You are cutting in and out for me. I forgot I moved my microphone to drink some water. Well, regardless, we'll have to find a better spot to camp than just the middle of the fields. Preferably one with cover when that ash cloud starts falling. Otherwise, it will choke us. Well, get to looking then. I'll just start heading west then. Sort of like a southwest direction. Okay. <clears throat> Into the trees again? No. He, he said you... they took us southwest. He's southeast. He's going southwest. Just sort of. Right. He's still going south, but veering towards the, the road they you took. You have a forest to your west. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so you they took us straight east. Okay. They, not straight east. More east than southeast, but in that direction. Okay. And they dropped you off at the tree line, meaning that if you go west at any point, you're back in the trees. Okay. At least as far as you can see right now. Might as well just fi follow the tree line. Follow the tree line, yeah. All right. Who is leading the way? <clears throat> Go in front. I win. Uh, the bard is a great idea. Say <laughs> so me. Well, say so me with a keen mind to have an impeccable, impeccable sense of direction. You just always know which way north is. <laughs> it doesn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and by always, by always knowing which way north is, can extrapolate which direction the other ones are. That's true. Whoever's leading Ezra will help. <laughs> All right. Give me a survival check. 
them what are in the lead. Okay. Them that the are in aid. the lead. Yep. And you have the aid, so it gives you advantage since you're being aided by Ezra. So With advantage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, fifteen. Okay. Um, as you're going along and moving throughout. You don't really spot any signs of civilization, but you definitely keep the tree line to your west, and as you're moving along, you can find a place um, where there's uh, enough canopy above you to provide some sort of protection from the elements if it starts to rain or anything else like that. Um, <clears throat> and it would probably be a good place to camp for the night. Hey, squat. This is where we squat. <laughs> oh, my God. Who is setting up watches for the night? Ezra will stay up for the first one. I'll take third. Owl will stay up for all watches. <laughs> um, if it rains, yeah. is he a moist outlet? Yep. And uh, Satiel will do his. He'll he'll take out the rod. Look, he's about to do it, and he's just he'll pause and he'll just shake his head, and then just sort of aim it at the ground, and he'll just make the alarm instead of actually drawing it in the ground. And we'll take the between the second and the third, or for the first and the third. That's what I meant. So second. <laughs> it's like N nice try. I like what you were trying to do there. He just makes me stupid. You get a you get a B for B for effort. Um, sure. Not having the inspiring leader trait. I'm not a fucking leader. Comes <laughs> what comes between one and three? Seven. The fuck <laughs> after six. <laughs> Uh, Ten. Fourth seven. We're talking about south seven. <laughs> Sorry. I hate all of you. No, you don't. <laughs> this is fair. I don't hate all of you. Just me. No. I do favor some of you over others. I'll be over here in my hole. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you all. You're all fantastic, in my opinion. All right. First watch passes without any incident. Second watch. Nothing happens. Third watch. A soft patter of rain starts to fall. And soon your entire party is covered in a rainfall that showers down on all of them. Fish, Luckily, so. <laughs> some of you have gear that will keep you at least somewhat dry. But for those of you who don't, you're going to be exposed to the elements. As the rains fall, um, <clears throat> who was on third watch? Me. All right. As the rains fall, you hear more activity in the forest. Um, but it's not deadly. Something is going to. It sounds like animals in the underbrush. Okay. I'm not going to move or rest. anything. It is a long rest. Okay. I'll just keep my eyes peeled. All right. Day finally breaks. And you all find yourselves uh, 
um, drenched in water, except for those of you who had a tent or those of you who are comfortable being, uh, you know, wet. <laughs> Does it bother me? <laughs> I am just sitting there pissed off. I'm content being wet. <laughs> See an issue with it? Me right. and Rain are best friends. Talking about my best friend. <laughs> Wait, am I the only one that. Oh, God, is Leope like pissed? Fucking mm. cat in water? <laughs> nope. He looks like he's fine, actually. Okay. He looks at you, though, and goes... He kind of bristles a little bit, and he goes, You're all wet. <laughs> and he's actually dry. He's not wet. Mind. I don't mind the wet. <laughs> mm, water's okay occasionally. Especially if we're drinking. That's true. <clears throat> um... He offers you, he opens up his pouch and offers you a small, I say small, it's about, mm, it's about that big around. And uh, it's uh, some sort of fruit. Not like the one that, that was plucked off the tree, but it's some sort of fruit that you're not familiar with. What YOLO? All right. <laughs> um, it is, uh, it has um, a Hold on, my brain is just went. Describe this. It the, is a mandarine forged with the blood of man. It is. Shut up, Steve. It has a thin, orange. It has a skin, a, a thin skin. Um, it is fleshy, and you can see that it has a pit in the center of it. It's not fuzzy like a peach. It's smooth. Nectarine. Yes, nectarine. He like is going to tear through that easily because now all of his teeth are yep. real sharp. <laughs> you uh, As you do that, <laughs> Leope's eyes go. <laughs> Just a really aggressive... <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> I need an adult, but a different adult, not this adult. <laughs> I'm barely um, an adult. I'm 19. Where are you guys going to go now? Are you going to continue? That's the plan. It seems like a smart one. All right. As you're moving south, you travel for another day. Nothing happens as you rest for the night, sticking to the line of the trees. Um, you start to see parts. Actually, give me a survival check. Whoever's leading the way. And I'm sure you're going to be giving them aid. Mm -hmm. Survival, you said? Mm -hmm. Yep. And with advantage. So make sure you take that. That, is a, that one's an 18. <laughs> what? 18 it is? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you're moving along, you can see parts of what appear to be grass moving through or growing around old stone. Like maybe this was an old road that's been overgrown. It leads more south than what you're, well, I should say it leads a little bit more southeast than what you're going. So away from the tree line. But it's the only thing you've seen of a road or any sign of civilization for some time, even if it is an old civilization. I'm going to roll to pick which way I go. <laughs> okay, you're taking the new road? Mm-hmm. All right. Taking the new road, you can see that it's actually built where it was smoothed out and then built up on the sides a little bit, allowing rain to flow off of the road, keeping it not dry, but at least not from flooding out. And as you march along, you can see that 
some of the path here starts to show more stone than grass. And as you continue to walk in the distance, probably still several miles away, you can see what appears to be uh, like a fort or a keep. Some sort of a manor. You don't see any flags popping in the wind. You don't see anything that shows signs of life. And again, you are still very far away, but you can see it down the road. Ow. That's pretty far. It'll be outside of your communication line. Well, I mean, he's going to keep the owl about 100 feet okay. ahead of him. Keeping as you walk. Um, nothing seems to come to mind. And behind the fort is a forest. It seems to be old, but it's not as big as the one you just came from. Um, but there doesn't seem to still be anything. It doesn't look like it's overgrown. Like it's, you know, the the fort seems to be. But again, like I said, you're still kind of far away. And as you continue, you can see that, oh, sure enough, the gates that were once standing probably proud and strong have fallen. You can see pieces of old timber that have rotted away to almost where you can crumple them in your hand, lay all over the place. You can see parts of the wall are broken. You can just step right through them. Here and there, grass shoots up through the brick and has eroded away some of the base foundation. Not enough to cause it to crumble or collapse, but enough to where you can see that it's going to take a little bit of repair if you were to do so. The whole thing seems to just give off this old feeling. What are you doing? Continuing? I mean, Slothiel's already like, ooh, stuff. <laughs> History! Uh, I, I keep going. Yeah. Archaeological significance. <laughs> All right. Um, Zastari, what are you, where are you at in this mix of people? Probably just, I'm walking. Not really talking to anybody, but I'm keeping an eye out. Um, but when we come across that, that looks like something fun. So, story, give me uh, a history check. Please. Oh, boy. Well, that's a nat 20 plus 3 for 23. You all watch as the story falters in her step. You don't know what it is about this fort. You ain't from around here. But there's something in the history about this particular region that strikes a chord with you. And it's not a good thing. It's, it's a bad thing. Well, that just makes it even more attractive to go into. Of course. Danger elf. All right. <laughs> As you continue forward, you can see the walls of it um, up on the edge of the walls. You can see a skeletal hand hanging from one edge of it. As you're close yeah. enough now, you can pass through the gates. The owl's flying over. Yeah. The owl sees fallen foes, opponents. Some are what would have been, I guess, taller of form and some shorter, more stout of form. You can see some of the bodies of the shorter, stouter ones are peppered with arrows, whereas some of the armor on the uh, on the taller forms appear to have been rendered deep gashes cut and gouged into the armor. Um, some of them have been bent in and smashed, especially around the helmets. Are there any like weapons or specific kind of weapons nearby? Um, you can see what may have been the remains 
bow or two, maybe a hammer, but it's rusted with age, like to the point of almost being dilapidated. In divine sense. <laughs> For the first time <clears throat> that you can yes. recall, you reach out and call to your oh. spirit. Not something was going to happen. <laughs> and there is there is a surge of energy that flows through you. Your eyes don't glow, but you feel like you can see things or recognize things are. And as you do, a sense of not terror, but malevolence sort of rolls through you. And you definitely sense the presence of the undead. Okie dokie. Um... He's going to turn and just be like, something's not right here. Not right? How? I, I don't know, but I can feel it. It's, it's not something pleasant. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I'm walking through the front door. All right. You walk through <laughs> the <laughs> gates. <laughs> walk that guy. Let's just go. As you walk through the front gates, you can see that the main keep, which is a stone, very simplistic building of stone that seems to rise about four stories in the air. Uh, each one probably about between 18 to 20 feet, giving the whole thing a rise of about 80 feet to the top of it, which is the reason why you can see it at such a distance. Um, there are some rooms off of the side of the courtyard. Uh, you can see that there's stone built into the side of it, as though maybe stables or barracks or something like that. The main door to the keep itself is currently, uh, well, it's open on one side because it is no longer a door there. Uh, the other side was pushed closed, but has basically dilapidated to the point where it's just hanging off of the hinges. Um, there doesn't seem to be any movement. <coughs> she's striding forward, very confident mm -hmm. in, in what she's doing, but she is very much keeping an eye out for any sort of traps or ambush because... Okay. She surprises the, you. You don't surprise her. The door to the keep is open. To the main keep is open. Are you heading into there or are you heading off somewhere else? Nope. Okay. Head right into the main keep. All right. As you pass into the main keep, your eyes adjust immediately. And you can see in scales of gray. Ooh, that's new. Is it? Well, but it's not. It is. <laughs> but it's not. All around here... Is This is a great hall, or what was once a great hall. And you can see large tables and a what would have been a, maybe a seat of power in the back. Not a throne necessarily, but something large like that. Um, slumped over the table here, there, and yon, you see several bodies. And as you approach and enter, small pinpoints of light burn in their eyes. And the sound of bone rattling starts as they rise and shift forward, ready to attack. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're going to call it for the night. Uh, I apologize for breaking early. I know we have like 30 minutes left, but I myself have not been feeling real good today. So I apologize. Um, as with always, I try to be entertaining and give it all I've got, but sometimes I run out of gas before I get there. Um, thank you all, one and all, for tuning in and paying attention and playing along with us, or at least hearing our story as we go. Uh, huge shout out, thanks, and all my love to Maddie, V, Molly, Eric, Steve, and Chief, who are all uh, with me tonight, even if some aren't on camera. Um, we will be back again next Monday with episode number five. And we have uh, in between there, though, if you're for more fun times with us. Remember, tomorrow night we have Esper Genesis, the uh, Holocaust of the Ekajadi, which is uh, has Eric playing in it. 
Uh, and then on Wednesday, we have Icons with Jason running the game. Uh, and we have V and Maddie playing in that one. On Thursday, we have Curse of Strahd, which stars <coughs> Maddie as our DM. Sorry. <laughs> Maddie as our DM. It has V playing in that one. Yep. Though we don't have it this week. Oh, no, we're not doing this week? This week is canceled because uh, V and I are going to be at Fan Expo. So if you are That's right. in the Toronto area this weekend and you're headed to Fan Expo, um, I will be cosplaying Cade 6 from Destiny. So... And I, I scare easily. What? I scare and easily. I scare easily. Yeah, <laughs> and V is easily terrified. Um, we so will life also goals. be in, uh, in accompaniment of my mom, who is one of the players on Thursday night. So if you see us, come on over and say hi. And uh, yeah, so no Curse of Strahd this week. All right. We'll be but, back next week with it. And remember, um, Thursdays we do have, if you're in the Huntsville area and you're looking for something to do on Thursday or in this week, Friday instead of Saturday, uh, please feel free to stop by Lucky Dice Cafe on South Memorial Parkway. Um, if you are looking for Adventure League games to play in, we're there on Sundays. Um, if you're a DM, help, please. Um, but we will be back next Monday with that. Uh, hopefully I will feel much better and keep an eye open for me starring in a new show called the obscurum that will be starring on nerdsmith. We are, it's a uh, twitch.tv slash we are nerdsmith or nerdsmith.org. If you'd like to, uh, support us speaking of, we appreciate any and all support. If you have a Twitch prime account, uh, please know that you do get a free sub and we would greatly appreciate it if you would sub it, uh, sub with us. Uh, you can also support us on Patreon um, and uh, we do, or buy me a cup of coffee. God knows I need it right now. Uh, but even if you don't, we really do appreciate you just sticking with us and, and hearing our story as we tell it. And please get others involved. It doesn't take anything to go, hey, you should check these guys out. We do have a YouTube channel. It's Dire Bear Adventuring Company. All spelled out because I'm an idiot, but it's uh, YouTube slash Dire Bear Adventuring Company. Um, so feel free to check out some of our past videos. You can catch up on Curse of Strahd, catch up on the escorts, watch our first campaign, most of it, <laughs> uh, or catch up on uh, the the Ekajati and some of our other played Montague J. Gunderson and Monster of the Week and uh, other things like that. So. Anyways, thank you all for tuning in tonight. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me just to have you guys here watching and take care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye, everyone.